vaccine hesitancy is, of course, a 21st and late 20th century phenomenon, but I think that it actually has deeper roots. If you look back at the development of the polio vaccine and the measles vaccine in the 50s and 60s, what you see, um, because there wasn't, um, there was immediate uptake and then a decline in the number of people who were vaccinated, is commentary from the medical profession and the public health uh, officials regarding the fact that as the disease stopped being visible, parents became complacent. Or, in some instances, according to some people, apathetic. In point of fact, I don't think that was what was going on. As the baby boom uh, acquired, became young adults and set up their own families, most of the women began pursuing higher education and um, went into the workforce. So it was very difficult for them to gain access to their family physician or to the local public health well baby clinic. And so it was a matter of access, a systemic issue, mm -hmm. rather than an attitudinal issue. Their children, as they began having their families though, in the 1980s and the 1990s and beyond, were facing a somewhat different situation. They tended to have moved away from home and not have access to their uh, mothers and grandmothers for support. And that led to a change in attitudes toward parenting. Parenting became something that you looked into advice books for. And depending on the advice book, you were certainly told that immunization was a good thing, but you weren't necessarily told when and where and how it should happen. And that led to two questions. The advent of the internet, of course, led to the creation of mother's groups and mommy blogs, and in effect, closed communities where the whole process of immunization was being discussed. And depending on the attitudes within your blog, you were either in favor or questioning. And some of those questions, of course, originated um, in response to the article by Andrew Wakefield that suggested that the MMR vaccine contributed to autism. Although that article was debunked and um, continues to be uh, debunked, it became, I think, almost folklore. And the problem with that is that that's very difficult for public health um, and healthcare professionals in general to combat because it's based more on emotion than necessarily on reason. Although, it's very interesting that the um, people who oppose immunization are willing to cherry pick information from scientific literature and use it to convince people not to immunize their children. As a result of the catalytic effect of this on parents from the turn of the 21st century to the present, immunization rates fluctuate in various places. And of course, the current measles outbreak in the United States has filtered into Canada, and we're well aware that disease is only a plane ride away. So, how do public health professionals go about responding to vaccine hesitancy? Historically, they tried to use scientific information. That really didn't fly because their um, opposition was in fact using emotive stories. Perhaps the most effective um, approach is to enable parents to ask when they bring the child for the immunization procedure any of the questions that are really at the heart of their hesitancy.